Hey guys, welcome to this edition of OMW Now. Today we have stories on Mrs. Evers in the front office, devices that might be allowed at school, and a story on St. Patrick's Day. Let's get started. I can't do this all on my own. No, I know I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. You may have seen students walking around with MacBook Pros or iPads. Let's see what these students are using the devices for. Olathe Northwest is trying out a new popular decision to bring your own devices to school. Several students were given MacBooks to test out how students would handle this. One of the students was senior Easton Cook, who thinks this is a step in the right direction. It's like a plan, like a bring your own device thing that's like rumored or whatever. I think it would be a pretty good idea. It would help like it's like the new, like, incoming thing, like a new innovative type deal that schools are starting to do, so I think it would be good. Not everyone agrees that bringing your own devices is a great idea. Drama teacher Mrs. Murphy goes into her personal thoughts about technology. Um, and I just think it's kind of addictive. I think it's way too easy. You know, I see people just immediately go to their phones when they have two seconds of downtime, and I'm not sure that that's mentally healthy. It certainly isn't giving our kids any time to have any quiet time, quiet mental time. Frankly, and this may be a little woo-woo, but I think that's why we have such a high stress level amongst our kids, because they're having no emotional or mental downtime at all, because their downtime is spent with electronics stimuli happening all the time. That's not really downtime because those synapses are still going, and I think that's completely overstressing our brains. There seems to be pros and cons to this new adaption, but for now, only seniors and debate students get to enjoy the free Wi-Fi and bring in your own laptop to school. For Orlando W Now, I'm Molly Murphy. Now back to the desk. When you walk in the front door of Olathe Northwest, the first face you will see is Debbie Evers. Allison Cook has more. Hello, Nathan Northwest. This is Debbie. How can I help you? When you walk into the office, Mrs. Evers' smiling face is the first thing you see. She really enjoys her job as the Olathe Northwest receptionist. The number one thing is I'm a people person, and it just kind of comes naturally, to be honest with you. She is a strong believer in treating others the way she would want to be treated. Bottom line is I try to treat people on that side of the counter the way I would want to be treated. Mrs. Evers' favorite part of the day is welcoming the smiling students. You know what, I would have to say the kids coming in that come in uh, uh, every day and I get to speak to everybody as they come in and see their little smiling faces and that, that would have to be what, what makes my day the most. Mrs. Evers loves every part of her day here at Olathe Northwest. I, ju I just enjoy being here. I enjoy you kids. I enjoy um, you know, answering the phones, I enjoy meeting people. It's, uh, I've made, my best friends are here in at Olathe Northwest and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> For ONW Now, this has been Megan Boppert. Now back to the desk. Now let's take it to game day. Good morning, Ravens, and welcome to the one and only game day Northwest. Let's get started. Turning up the volume so we're laughing on the dial. The o &W wrestling team had three state medalists this year with a team led by head coach Steve Mesa. Doug Pearson has the full story. Last week in the o &W wrestling team went to Wichita for the Kansas State Wrestling Tournament. We had nine qualifiers including Evan Pardue, Luke Middleton, Doug Newcomb, Taylor Jokerst, Will Whitaker, Anthony Macaluso, James Macaluso, Connor Albert, and Dean McCollum. Will Whitaker and Doug Newcomb both finished fourth, with Taylor Jokers finishing sixth. Whitaker and Newcomb tells us how they felt with the top five finish. Uh, I kind of, kind of wish I could have done a bit better, but uh, for this year I'm content. Hopefully next year I'll do a little better. Personally, I thought I did terrible. Um, I was extremely close to being in the state finals again, and um, a bad call went the other way. and. The guy I lost to ended up winning the tournament, so. Steve Mesa, the head wrestling coach, informs us on how he feels about having three people play SSA. Uh, they were definitely the leaders, uh, at least on the team, as far as win and loss column. 
uh, they did a great job all year long for us in the practice room and, y and you could tell that they had spent some time you know with their craft and, and uh, basically they came away with some state medals. For OW Now this is Doug Pearson and Jesse Payne. The bowling team had a great 2014 season. Jason McFarland has a recap of the year. As the OW bowling season quickly comes to a close Garrett Neal, the only freshman on varsity this year, and varsity senior Adam Wood reflect on the season with only two meets remaining. I think it's more competitive. It's pretty impressive that I, I couldn't believe that uh, I made it. I'm a little nervous about the new oil patterns, but I don't know. I think team would do good. I started really late. I started when I was like 12 as opposed to people that started really early. I'm a little nervous. Uh, all the Olathe schools are pretty... Uh, Comp uh, competitive. I'd say primarily it's more of a fun thing, but you know, if you want to take it to the next step, there's definitely competitive bowling out there. Wood gives tips on how to improve your bowling techniques. Um, just do what you can. Be focused. Um, you stick to a routine. You know, practice, practice, practice. Can't reiterate it enough. Um, that's my best advice. For Alex Don, this has been Jason McFarlane. Now back to the desk. Repeating a victory is not easy, but a three-peat on a national level is a feeling only the Raven Dance team knows. Let's go to Allison Cook for the story. The Raven Dance team brought back their third national title. They had to fight through prelims on Saturday, where they had the highest score for varsity team performance, giving them confidence heading into the finals on Sunday. Varsity dancer Brittany Huguenin explains the details of the competition. And when they said with a score of 9.342, it was a late Northwest and we won large varsity team performance category. The team really bonded together to meet their common goal. The best part about going to Florida with my team is that we got to bond and really relate to each other and just bond more than we ever have before. They bonded the most during the moments right before they were announced as champions. As we were just like every single time they started announcing something, we would all squeeze hands like so hard. And the dancers soaked in the entire experience competing against teams around the nation. Well, it was really cool to see the other teams because everyone works just as hard as we do and everyone's in full makeup and costume and everyone's just so competitive and ready to fight and get that first place title. Besides coming home national champions, they also won fourth place in jazz, fourth place in international, innovative choreography, technical excellence, and superior showmanship. Congratulations, Raven Dance Team. For ONW Now, this has been Allison Cook. That wraps things up for Game Day Northwest. For Tyler Sotart, I'm Tanner Nelson. Have a good one, Ravens. With spring break around the corner, that means St. Patrick's Day will shortly follow. Ashley Couch has more. Some common nicknames, I guess, is like Ginge, Ginger, Little Red, and Big Red, depending on who you're comparing to. Ranga. Ranga. Orangutan. Yeah. It's short for orangutan. Yeah, because of our red hair. Yeah. Ginger, Red, um, Carrot Top. That's a good one. Ginger, Carrot Top. Yeah. I, the, the usual. Yeah. I can't stand when people say ginger with the hard R though. Oh yeah, we prefer ginger. ginger. Um, I think it's more of an equality issue, knowing we stand alone. Not a lot of people are gingers, so that's cool, I guess. Personally speaking, the struggles haven't been all that bad up until middle school is when. Middle school, you know, that was. Awful. My parents told me for the first time, you have red hair, and yeah. I didn't know what to do. Sunburns are awful in the summer. I literally don't get tan at all. I'm just red all the time, and I get tons of freckles all over my body. Advantages could be like, if you like see someone in the hallway that also has red hair, you can like, like they know, like instant connection. Um, you're not safe inside. You gotta slap on some sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> Always got some SPF 100, just in my bag, keep it 300. Wear lots of sunscreen, don't um, dye your hair, because it will be bad when you try and re-dye it. My plans for St. Patrick's Day, probably gonna get together with my people and have like a family 
bonding moment. Go to Ireland? Probably, yeah. Does that add you want a question? No, we're going together, actually. Yeah. That would be fun. Um, wear a lot of green. Try not to get mistaken for a leprechaun. Our hair is not actually fire. It can't burn you, opposed <laughs> to common beliefs. Pants, no shorts. Not I, I don't economy. even know what shorts are. Yeah, how much is sunscreen now? Three forty-four a gallon or something. That's it's where I get it at the at the depot. Yeah. yeah. We're people too, you know. <laughs> that we're people too. That's all we have for you on this edition of Own to Be Now. If you want to know more about what's going on at Olathe Northwest, check out onwravens.net slash ravendaily or follow us on Twitter at onw underscore ravendaily. For Savannah Pumley, I'm Elena Gray. Have a great day, Ravens.